Previously on The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 5. Joel and Ellie are past Kansas City. They've made it all the way from Boston. They've passed Kansas City, and they should be heading out somewhere towards Wyoming. Ellie kills an infected with a knife, so she's got melee skills, and Joel is starting to care for Ellie. What did you think of the Season 1, Episode 6 episode? I thought overall it was a good episode. I would give it like an 8 out of 10. Uh, I really liked Joel feeling joy after um, Ellie and him go on the trip after they leave the commune. He felt hopeful, like he was able to forget his troubles, at least for a short time. Really felt that. I really felt the tension between Joel and Tommy as like sad because it's the apocalypse. They don't have much time to mend fences. So the fact that they just like got right back to yelling at each other, I don't know, I felt it. Um, uh, I felt there was just another example in this show about just so much prosperity in the commune. I mean, they had everything in order, like, like it was the modern world. It was crazy. Um, I also thought travel through winter Wyoming on foot. I don't know if it's that easy. It's cold. It's snowy. You know, trees are barren. Bushes are barren. There's no fruit. I think it's hard. I think it's a really hard hike. And they're just like, we can do it. And then also, I wanted more explanation of the university. Like, I wanted to explore around and look what's what, what's going on. But I guess you got to play the game and do that. But overall, I really liked the episode. I liked the interactions between the characters. I liked, you know, all the scenery and everything. So overall, 8 and 10. Hmm. How about you? Have you ever walked through snow without snowshoes? Uh, yes. It's exhausting, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You slip slide like, all around. Just absolutely just glute burn. Just, it, it's super painful. Uh, I also thought about the university. I thought, like, man, if they're at this university, that, I mean, Eastern Colorado University has probably got a pretty dope library. They should check it out all the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So I thought this episode was a seven out of 10, a little bit less than what you thought. Um, so so Joel pushes away Ellie and he says it's for her safety. But honestly, I think it's some variety of PTSD um, because he's had a very challenging life, especially with with losing his daughter. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a therapist. So 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 I can't I can't uh, diagnose that. We find Tommy and he's he's actually just kind of happy to stay in his commune, like his his city fortress community. Um, I get it. Like it's pretty awesome there but if he says that it's like a day's ride to eastern colorado university and and ellie's super important for the entirety of humanity uh go with go with joel like just escort him what, what's going on um oh but that that's that city fortress community is doing very well it's doing better than some cities are doing now in that non-apocalypse um, and and and, e and Eastern Colorado University is a bust. Um, so I guess head out to Salt Lake City. It seems to be a good mm, connecting point between all the roads. Uh, overall, 7 out of 10. Didn't feel that good for me, but, um, you know, they're good parts. So let's talk about them. Let's do it. Okay. This week on The Last of Us, Season 1, <laughs> Episode 6. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about the zipper. I saw this so, too. <laughs> so we, we we meet this like older couple who's like surviving like bosses out here in the wilderness. But a little cavalier with the zipper. Ready? Like there is no zipper replacements coming down. You can't get, you know, go down to the corner shop and buy zippers. And he's just like, zip. What if it would like catch and then break? There's no replacements coming. Yeah, I just, just slow it up. I've I've messed up zippers doing much less than that, <laughs> like and like this is a twenty year old jacket. You don't get replacements. Like you'd be mm -hmm. super careful with that zipper. That's right. Even if you had replacement zippers because you had bought them before the apocalypse or right after, maybe that's the wife's thing. I don't know. Yeah, you still have to sew it in, and that to require get that alignment so that they just is that takes some serious skill. And they here don't have power, so they're not using an electric sewing machine. Maybe they have, for some reason, a, fo a foot pedal power sewing machine, like one of them old singers. Oh, yeah. But like, unless they have that, then one of them is doing it by hand, and that's going to be painful. It's, even if it's, even if they're good at it, you still lost like a day's worth of time. Like that's right. Yeah. Just be careful with this shit. Zoop, zoop, zoop. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, so this picture, I was just, I wanted to look at the uh, prosperity that they have. Look at all these things, candle right there. Apparently, you know. I mean, maybe, yeah. So either they had a bunch of candle reserves <laughs> or these people are bee farmers. I don't know what bee farmers do during the winter. I don't know. I, you know, I guess wood is, you know, go down, chop it up. I mean, it takes a lot of calories. Yeah, but um, but also, I mean, if they're cutting wood around the house, there's only so long they can do that before they gotta go farther and farther, and farther, and carry wood cross distances. Yeah, and apparently they don't have any calorie restrictions because they are looking healthy. They're looking real healthy. Looking real healthy. That's I'm not. Sh- I mean, they're in a winter area, so they're burning many, many more calories than a summer area. Just they to have warm. to go f- do food and manual labor pretty often, and yet they're still overweight. Also, is that window on the left open? Is it open? No, it's, is it? There's actually, there looks like there's at least bad seals, maybe. So they have enough heating here to just dump energy into the room and lose some, yeah. no problem. Yeah. I think this would be a really difficult place to survive. I think they would be skinny and maybe eking out in existence, but mm-hmm. they seem quite comfortable. Especially if it's just the two of them. If they had like two kids or something and get many hands on, then yeah, maybe. Kids may be a burden for the first five 18 years. years. But no, but no, but in like in this situation, they're a burden until like five years, maybe. Right. And then, then after that, you put the them farm. to work. Basically, mm-hmm. they can do stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about this? Bunnies. Cute, cute, but sad. Uh, because they're, they're like beautiful, cute little white bunnies. Um, that being said, so there we just made a short about preserving meats, and uh, yeah, this is pretty good. You just leave it outside because it's cold. Although that's cool. I guess they really should have dressed the rabbits first. You should have extracted whatever, um, like intestines, so that way mm. it can't spoil inside. And it's also just going to be easier to do that while it's fleshy and fleshy. That's not, right. Not ice. Maybe he just didn't feel like doing it right then and there. So he's like, I'll just hang him up for a second. Take care of it later. I mean, I don't think there's that much. Like, you don't have to do it within the day, right? I mean, you can wait a couple hours. before. not a hunter. I'm not a hunter. And from TV shows I've seen where people hunt, like like, like, like Alaska shows, Mm -hmm. they like cut the animal up in the field. I guess maybe that's because it's heavy to carry it back. But I thought it was because you can't let the bacteria like Mm. continue to live in there oh i see i was also thinking what about you hang this dead animal outside i mean it's the apocalypse bears cats i mean they're gonna smell this thing they're gonna figure it out uh are you enticing wildlife to come check out and steal food maybe the wildlife comes up and then they run into the fence and the fence is electrified and also flamethrowered and there's shotgun shells and then just boom, take, just, just take care of it. Mm-hmm. It's like a little sinkhole for our food. <laughs> <laughs> Man, something to think in the apocalypse. Damn. Ba- oh, wow. You'd have to like, if you found an animal that was like an easy shot, you'd have to wonder if it was a bait from an enemy group. <sighs> oh, that's tough. Yeah, you'd have to be thinking all the time. Mm. Yeah, so this is a national mention, forest. Yeah, so this is Yellowstone. Ah, yeah, so they're in Yellowstone, and I was really confused about where they are. So here's here's Yellowstone Lake, and if you look here, this says Stevenson Island. You see that okay. Stevenson Island. So Agreed. I was like, where the heck? Here's Stevenson Island. Okay, right there. So they are in Yellowstone. Um, okay, and they were talking about the River of Death, which must be the Yellowstone River. Okay. Uh, and they were talking about the best way to go west is to go east temporarily or something. I don't know if that was just a one-liner. Uh, oh, oh, I interpreted that as don't go east. Don't go west. West is too dangerous. Like, the best way to go west is you don't. I see. So they called this the river of death. So they're saying okay. they decided to go west anyway because on this side is, I don't know, the bad people. So this is the river of death. They cross it. Somehow they end up over here. Mm-hmm. But then later, we'll talk about this. Um, they end up on twenty-five Interstate twenty-five, which is um, yeah, 
way over here. So I was confused as to like, which way are they going? Um, I know, I was confused. Um, I don't know, I like this map stuff, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's Ellie. Ellie with excellent trigger discipline. Very good. No, no, keep keep your booger hook <laughs> out of the trigger. Um, but isn't her gun empty? She's bluffing, right? Well, finger off the trigger, even if you're empty, always act like it's loaded. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So... There, I mean, we have. It's three months later, so is it possible oh. she found ammo? Possible, I mean, unlikely. I, guess, I, I guess. think you're not just gonna. It's not a video game where you just like find ammo stashes everywhere. <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe. Yeah, or she's bluffing. Either is, is acceptable. I guess also when she was in that battle and she ran dry, uh -huh. um, maybe she had something some extra magazines in her backpack but in the moment didn't have that time to grab them so maybe I mean, when when we saw her take the gun from bill and frank it was just a partial magazine and i don't know if she had any of that but 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 your point stands maybe she found they maybe they reloaded somewhere mm -hmm. fine somewhere else yeah. yeah or they're bluffing they learned that from uh henry and sam bluff yeah. Bluff. meet thief look at ellie she just took a rabbit Yep, just took it. Kind of. That's a cocky huge dick shit. move. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a big dick move. She she's just taking, she's taking whatever. Oh, there's a deer there. There's a deer. I didn't realize it. I forgot there was a deer. That's just asking for like a bear to come along and take it. That's right. Which is okay if you have a big old bear trap. You want to get you some bear meat. But if not, you're just asking for trouble. Asking for trouble. Yeah. Plus, what the only gun they have is not a gun. It's a crossbow. I wouldn't want to take on a bear with a crossbow. Yeah, I'm not sure they... I mean, unless you hit them just right, I'm not sure they yeah. care too much. Yeah, you're going to hit them, and then they're going to get angry, and then you're going to die. Yeah. Oh, is this another building over here? Hmm. Did not know. Wait, but is it his or is it his neighbor's? It looks to be on the other side of the fence. <sighs> Maybe. His neighbor's, his neighbor's house. I mean, they're right out in the middle of nowhere, no way. <laughs> I got all this land. Like, I'm going to build my house right on the edge of my property. <laughs> oh, <F you. laughs> this is 20 year old duct tape. And How long does duct tape last if no it's idea. in a sealed, you know, preserved roll? How many years duct tape? Here, here I'll look it up. Yeah, I'll look it up. Here we go. How many years? I'm predicting, does... I don't know. This is just my hunch, like six months, maybe two years. Let's see. Most duct tape products list, most tape products list a six months to two year shelf life. Shelf life is determined by the composition of the tape, backing, release liner, along with aging studies that document the performance of the tape in real time and or accelerated aging conditions. Yeah, so if you have it like wet or sitting in the sunlight, getting UV damage all the time, that's going to mess it up. If you have it like sitting in like a degreaser or whatever. But if you have your duct tape sitting in like a sealed nitrogen purged container, like, you know, how people keep the tapes, then uh, yeah, it lasts a long time. But this this may be after it's been stuck on something. It needs to be replaced after six to two years. What if you just have a roll that is not been opened yet oh you're saying so if somebody had two like two pieces of ducting and they connected it with duct tape and then put it back on the shelf then they could quote it as being a shelf life still and then and then it might be shorter i, I i'm not sure if what you're saying so i i think shelf life is unused so about all reputable time Tape manufacturers recommend shelf life for their products. The most common time frames is 6 to 12. That seems really short to me. I, I've had, I've definitely used tape, duct tape and packing tape far longer than two years. And it's totally oh. fine. So it's like the best used before thing where that actually doesn't mean a lot. Right. So what's the, like, if you got down to 50% stickiness, right, which is still probably usable. Um, depends on your application, yeah. Depends on the application. How long would it take to do that? To me, two years, a reduction to say 50% stickiness, that is really short. 
as, as in as in it's too short of a time estimation yeah i, I think right, i've had yeah. some older tape than that i mean i've probably had five ten year old tape that still works pretty okay i might be dating myself here but i've had some 50 year old tape really it was a part of my i have nothing there's nothing there <laughs> <laughs> So that's kind of like, okay, so if you look at Best Buy dates on canned goods, yeah, they'll give you like the worst case scenario. But if it's the apocalypse, you're not, you're not going to be adhering to those oh, dates. Know. Like what's the real date for most products? Of, often the manufacturer, the, the manufacturer's like Best Buy date is not even the worst case date. It's the don't sue me date. So this right. six months to two years is, is could also be a don't sue me date, which means it's like, yeah. The integrity of the product is 99%, but they're like, uh, just say two years. <laughs> just say two years, yeah. yeah. So maybe it's okay if if it's not Joel is... Okay, this yeah. Is, if, this yeah. Is a, if this is a fresh piece, maybe it's okay. In fact, I don't know what the oldest duct tape has been. Maybe it can last uh, 50 years, 30 years. And so mm -hmm. this is totally reasonable. I don't know. Yeah. If anybody knows, let us know. Duct tape duct, experts. Duct tapeologists. Duct tapeologists. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, here, Joel is drinking a bit of alcohol, and Ellie was like, "You know, let me have some just to warm up." But, but public service announcement: if you're freezing, don't drink alcohol. Right. If you're freezing, you don't. You have water supply issues, meaning camping not nearby. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. tap water and without modern infrastructure let's let's not drink in fact let's not even we have limited weight supply in our on our backpack let's not even devote time to a flask it. and alcohol i say keep the flask because you never know when you might meet, might need a water container but the alcohol well i guess maybe alcohol for for like wounds is a flask a good weight to storage ratio it's terrible i think it's terrible you want something lighter more yeah. voluminous and probably something collapsible. So mm -hmm. if it's not full, it decreases in size. You can squish it, roll it up. Mm -hmm. But then in the army, or whatever, they always had canteens. You know, click, maybe. Click, click. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess the trade off is something collapsible is that it's also probably puncturable. So this flask, you know, you can drop it and hit a rock. Who cares? Yeah. What would you guys do if uh, you were in L Joel and Ellie's situation? What uh, water container would you use? Oh, but definitely don't don't drink alcohol. It'll cool you down faster. Right. Definitely don't drink alcohol. And it'll dehydrate you. So it'll don't do that. You. Double bed. Oh, yeah. So I, at the very first time we saw them camping or sleeping, they decided not to do a watch. And then Joel was like, I'll do a watch anyway, like the Terminator. But now they're doing official watches. I was like, did they change their procedure at nighttime? You want to take first watch or second? I'll do both. I didn't see, I didn't, I didn't know they were making progress and incrementing their procedures at night. I mean, I guess it has been several months since we last saw them. So maybe they've, they've come up with that. I mean, I guess they ran into some issue where they needed to do a watch and they didn't. Because mm. it's quite a sacrifice because you could be supposed to sleeping for eight hours or whatever, sundown to sunset, you know. But instead, you're trading off. So the amount of sleep you're getting is less and you're taking up more time at night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's quite a which, sacrifice. Which makes your traveling the next day just, or even if you're not traveling, even if you're going to set up a camp there, it makes everything just less effective. You're just exhausted. Yeah. So I, I would have liked to have seen that growth. Mm. Oh yeah. This also, Joel was at watch and then he fell asleep. With, not in the sleeping bag, directly on the ground in winter time, without a hat or ear covers. He and might have died. Only. He could have frozen. Yeah, and his sleeping bag's right there. You can see it in the picture. Like, Yo, dude. Yeah, and these gloves with fingers that aren't mittens. Your fingers get really cold really fast. So uh, that was re he's really lucky. I mean, his ear, right here. I know it's a motion blur here, but his ear is definitely not frostbitten. But it could have been. Looking but it could have been. He got really lucky. A lot of exposure there. Yeah. Ellie should have woken him up, got him in a sleeping bag at least, you know, with the... Right, right, right. 
So or they, heck, they even put hers on top of him when she wasn't using it. That's right. Yeah. Or underneath him. I guess it's, it's more important to protect you from the bottom. Because the cold will suck heat right out of you. That's right. I mean, the floor, the, the cold on the floor. Yeah. I mean, and it's, he's got like the worst flooring too. It's this hard heat sucking floor. Whew. It's not even like leaves or whatever. Yeah. With like some, you know, air cushion to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. make the transfer of heat slower. For all y'all that live in cold water, cold weather, maybe you know this, mittens aren't as cool, but they're definitely warmer. Right, definitely warmer. And these types of gloves, it looks like maybe a leather or pleather mm -hmm. with fingers, maybe not a good seal. Your fingers will get so cold so fast. So Secondary bonus for mittens is people can't tell when you're giving them the finger. That's, oh, that's, yeah. You're always giving them the finger because one tell. finger is the middle finger. Oh, okay. By definition, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they dodged a bullet there. Whew. Yeah. It's natural death. Ah, oh, this bridge. This is a 20-year-old bridge, right? Yep. No maintenance. Sitting out in the fluctuating hot and cold water exposure. So from what I understand, bridges would be one of the last structures to collapse. But I could be wrong. So if anybody knows, let me know. But I think these are so overbuilt and can withstand exposure that it would take a long time for them to collapse. But I could be wrong. Especially this looks like a bridge built in like maybe the late 19th, early 20th century. And these were like ridiculously overbuilt because they didn't have computers to do the simulation, as far as I understand. Ah. So they went like 10 times the strength needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, this is interesting. How long would the bridges last? Also, I found it. Oh. <laughs> so you it's up man. here in Calgary. Yeah. And in Canmore. Let me go here. How the F did you find this? Well, because I looked up the where they, they filmed it, and it was in oh, Canmore. Was <laughs> yeah. And it's right here, the Canmore Engine Bridge. So if we Ooh, go here. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. And I guess there's nothing there. I'll just click on it. There I it see, is. like, that square part of the bridge, and then there's the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's up in Canada. But I guess that Canadian wilderness is similar to Wyoming, so it makes sense. I, I think so. That's cool. Yeah. I could not find this dam. I could not find Damn. it. I didn't know where this was. Damn. So. Didn't they talk about, we, we've talked about in some of our shorts about hydroelectric uh, dams in the apocalypse. And it's just, without global supply chains, or at least national supply chains, I'm just not sure it's viable because the amount of supplies and expertise and expertise and engineering and organization and admin you need to run one of these things, not sure it's going to happen, but they do. They do. I mean, so, so they say in the show that Joel doesn't know how these things work. Um, the short and sweet of it is you make a large container of water that's high up and you let gravity pull the water down. As the water is pulled down by gravity, then you put a little a motor there, but you run it backwards so that when it spins, it generates electricity. Um, that's called a dynamo. And so somewhere in there, there's a spinning piece of metal that's right next to electrics uh, and water. So, so, I mean, that's wear and tear. This thing would not run unless you have some engineer maintaining it. And I've taken tours of turbines and stuff in so dams. Fun. And it is not like easy. It's very it's precise big. engineering. And yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to get the flowy to turn to the spinny to turn to the sparky. That was the stupidest way to explain it, but it was exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you boil it down. <laughs> Either way, cool shot. I cool really shot. liked it. Super cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. This is another thing similar to the zipper where you don't have maps anymore. So be kind to your map. That's all right. He just takes this map out. And... I mean, it's not too bad, but I want him to fold it more nicely and just be gentle mm -hmm. with it. Because if there's an accidental tear or something, I mean, you don't have a replacement. So 
For all we know, this is the last map of this location in existence, which means if this thing gets destroyed, we don't have drones, we don't have GPS. You can't just make a new map. Like you'd have to have someone walk it and recreate the knowledge. Right. Like this is super precious. And then even if there was this wasn't the last map, where the hell are you going to find a new one? That's you right. have to happen upon it. The chances of that happening could be quite low. So Oh, well, if Ellie gets upset, she might throw stuff out on the road, even if it's precious documents. You're just asking for a rip. Asking for a rip. Plus the storage in that pocket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty. So my my pops still likes the, he likes the paper maps. And so like the in the back of his car, you see the paper map and it's like where the folds, you can't read anything there. It's mm -hmm. all just torn away from wear and tear. Also, I do think it's a good idea though to have an updated paper map in your vehicle and in your house at all times hmm. for backup. Because if... If the internet goes down, there's a national emergency. I think having a paper map is a important, even if it's a little out to date, it, you know, you can navigate. Imagine it for you following everyone else on the freeway and then, but they've been routed somewhere else and everyone's just following, but you're the one person with the map. You're like, I'm gonna take this exit right here. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, now you get to live. That's right. I bet you, I wonder if we check the DHS website for survival gear. Absolutely. Probably Absolutely. paper map. Totally. Yeah. Okay. In summary, be kind to your map. I put I have a bunch of paper maps in of like Capo San Lucas, like you know, just in case, just in case I like, you know, that's where I'm gonna go if this shit goes down. That, that's all my map is is Baja California, just so I can beeline it down to beeline Cabo. Down, yeah. mm -hmm. Apocalypse doesn't exist. I actually cut out parts of the map that I don't need that don't aren't need, gonna take yeah. me there. Yeah. That's right. Look at this commune. <laughs> so like the steel is nice and yeah. straight. The bolts yeah. are nice and tightly drilled. Very little rust. Yeah. The logs and look at this rafter at the top. Yeah. That solid beam of like Ooh. of wood and it's like stained and it's I don't know if they have stain or if this is like char stain. So there's like that requires like craftsmanship, some artisanry. This place yeah. is amazing, right? So they've got craftsmen, metal workers woodworkers, mm -hmm. some kind of engineer who's planning this before it's built. Amazing. Even this this this, uh, this beam right in front of us, right at the edge of the door on the left here, next to the mouse. This one. Yeah, even that is cut very straight, very well. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe these are not cut so well. I mean, I mean beam, looking at that long edge, that long, long edge, edge is hard to do. It's hard to do, yeah. Because you got to cut that from fallen trees, which are mm -hmm. circular and irregular. So you have to you have to like to cylinder them up and mm -hmm. then slice it. And and you can make machines for this, but like that takes quite a bit of engineering. That's right. Yeah. Maybe they had one lying around. Then you got to maintain it. Yeah. Whew. Where well, you're getting oil yeah. to run chainsaws. Yeah. I see they're missing some bolts here, though. That's yeah, okay. You know. Good oh wait, does that lift up? Oh no, that doesn't lift up. There's bolts here. That's okay. That's okay. They got most of it. I think there's a second picture. Yeah. There were even welds. I, I, it wasn't in that picture, but there were welds there too. Like, so they got someone that knows how to weld well. And doesn't welding take a lot of power? Sure does. Wow, amazing. Mm -hmm. Even this um this lamp post or oh, the signpost on the left, Festival of Lights oh, yeah. 2003. Yeah. Look at that quality of that wood. That's been outside yeah. for twenty years. Yeah, and, and like, no, no, they, they that must, that must, that's new. That's new, new, and they put up the old signs. Right? Wouldn't it be faded <laughs> as hell? They're like, <laughs> what do we do with these signs? Like, put them back up. Put them back up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so e e even if it's new or old, that's still an expensive piece of wood. That, that's right. That's, yeah. that's high quality shit. That's right. Yeah. I don't know why these guys are working right here in the middle of the busy street, but there they are. It might be okay if they if this is like the edge of town and people don't really go in and out. Then yeah, I like, guess so. It's actually actually kind of a useful spot. Look how nice this place is. I would live here it's, now. It's, oh yeah, so nice. I mean, they've got all the things, all the things. Mm, the need. three American flags. Yeah, and without cars, so everyone is talking to each other, and they, walking, you get talking. back to those, that, those like animal basics of human connection. I mean, it might even be better than life today. I mean, maybe actually. Okay. Amazing. Whew, I felt this Ooh. one. Just 
you know, I felt they've it. had problems in the past, but they're still brothers. And it's just this big hug. And it's like, I didn't know if you were alive for years. Yeah. And like, I risked yeah. my life and this kid's life to come find you. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I felt it. It's felt great. It. Mm. It's a great hug. And then they have the arguments later. But right now in this moment, they're brothers. It's great. And the, the finality of, I mean, it, it's painful to not know if your loved one is alive or not. And so to, mm -hmm. to have that relief off of you, like to see them there. and ooh. Yeah. And he's still got all of his, his body parts. Awesome. Awesome. Still intact. Yeah. Awesome. He's not infected. Awesome. Awesome. Dining this part. hall. I mean, the prosperity that they have is ridiculous. Okay. So lights, I see lights, you know, and these, these are not efficient lights. Oh no, these are, these are incandescents. Yeah. Even if they're say LEDs, it's still you still got a lot of them. You could have mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. a couple big efficient lights to light this place. Plus, it's daytime. Turn them off. Turn them off. It's daytime. Know, sky you got windows. That. Yeah. And then they're got they're running like buffet tables with heaters underneath. Uh, They've got music equipment that's electronic. I see amplifiers. Like that's what? Right. And <laughs> they could have had an acoustic guitar, but instead they would like electric guitar in here. Why? Why do they have electric? Do they have? They have the resources to run electric concerts. <laughs> wow! Wow! I was yeah. taken aback by the the tablecloths. What is that? Just neat and organized. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They. I mean, that is a statement that they have enough resources that they can polish the concrete floor, <laughs> and uh, and that they yeah. can they have time to have someone be assigned to hey make the dining room nice. Yeah. Absolutely. And a Pretty refrigerator good. here. Hmm. Wait, it's cold outside right now. Why are they wasting energy on refrigeration inside a heated place? It would be super cool if you could like have a refrigerator that dumps heat just to outside of the Wait, wait. Hmm. Actually maybe hmm. now I don't know. <laughs> well if it's if it's if it's cold outside, why don't we have refrigerators that just pull in the cold air? That's right. It's so inefficient. If it's cold outside, you know, was it below? I don't know what refrigerators are at, like 45 degrees. And freezers bad. are like in the, maybe the teens yeah. Fahrenheit. If it's that cold outside, bring that air in. Yeah. Maybe I was some, go ahead. Maybe this is just open to the outside. But seasonally, because during right. other times of the year, you'd want to shut it out. That's right. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. There's some efficiency to be gained here on like a societal level, like like yeah. for us humans, like now, like how we design our refrigeration. Unless you have abundance of power, then so you don't need to worry so much about inefficiencies. Agreed. These places, these people are living well. Living real well. Yeah. So in this cafeteria, the amazing cafeteria, they start talking about. Uh, well, let's just watch and then we'll see. Ready. But it's all bark. We're just trying to scare off those who might want to try us, is all. They say that you leave dead bodies around? A bad reputation doesn't mean you're bad. So <laughs> they have this commune and they're going around killing people like in brutal and savage ways uh, to scare people so they don't mess with this particular commune. So as far as I understand, the Mongols used to go to a city and just be like, okay, we're going to burn this whole thing down kill everybody and take everything. And so they do it to one city. And then the next city they come to, they're like, please surrender. And the city's like, yeah, we're going to surrender <laughs> because mm -hmm. we don't want you to burn us entirely to the ground. So this is what I call the Mongolian mindset. Go be savage, go be brutal. So next time people are like, okay, okay. All right. All right. So that's what they're doing. Let's, let's oh, man. watch one more time. But it's all bark. We're just trying to scare off those who might want to try us is all. They say that you leave dead bodies around? A bad reputation doesn't mean you're bad. I I latched on to the word leave. And so Ellie's like, people say you leave bodies around. Like, you guys are not tidy. Like, not cool. This is bad. Clean up after yourselves. Uh -huh. That's where I grabbed onto it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see, what you, I see your interpretation, and that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I mean... I guess leaving bodies around is somehow that emotional thing about not showing dead proper respect. That's a good point. Yeah. You're just tossing them into the woods somewhere, which then you're like, oh, these people, they're terrible. Uh, they're savagery. Look at them. They don't bury their dead. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. There's darkness in this settlement. Then also, that's Mongolian mindset. Also, this thing about abundance. I want to talk about that. Listen to what they have set up in terms of like community resources and organizations and stuff. House of worship, multi-faith, school, laundry. Oh, bank works as the jail, not that we've needed it. You draw power from a dam. Got that working a couple years ago. After that, sewage, plumbing, water heaters, lights. This place actually fucking works. Like an alley. Also, they're like, we have a jail, not that we need it. This is a frontier town, you know, there's no centralized government. It's a commune right. and you don't need a jail. Give me a break. Come frontier on, you need towns, a jail. Frontier towns need jails even in good times. Right. You Like there are bad people who are going to try to exploit the commune. Mm -hmm. You're going to need sheriffs and police. It was all, that's the whole old West thing. Like it's hard to maintain civil society in these situations. You're going to need a jail. You know why they don't need a jail? Why? Because anyone out of line becomes a body outside. <sighs> They don't need a jail. Oh, they shit. They don't need a jail. They don't need a jail. Yeah. I was thinking of it as like, it's way too idealistic, but actually it's actually savagery. Yeah. I mean, it's savagery, but look at the city. It's the Christmas yep. lights up, looking good. So nobody steps out of line. Who am I to shit on them? <laughs> it's a, it's an elected council, which means... <laughs> 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 because because of where we're standing you never see it but behind maria there's like some just solid thugs just absolute beasts of men just, just intimidating everyone yeah. it's like oh you didn't vote for me uh where did jeff go i don't know, where, Tom, I don't know. I, Tom, I guess maria he, turns around and tommy's like he's like joel get me out of here <laughs> crazy anyway so they have they have all kinds of stuff Mm -hmm. schools laundry first time they ever mentioned laundry that's awesome mm -hmm. you know i mean i think it would be really hard to maintain like power and water and laundry and all these things without modern globalized supply chains it's more like an old west town which were quite chaotic mm -hmm. as far mm -hmm. as i understand unless it's ruled by an iron fist okay i'm putting this place together this place <laughs> yeah. didn't make sense to me but i see it now yeah, that kind of makes sense yeah uh -huh. it's when outsiders come in it's a commune <laughs> this this amazed me so it's like 20 years after the apocalypse and like there's no maintenance people but they have ice yep they have an ice machine right back there industrial scale excellent these people these people have so much resources that they can dedicate an ice machine even though it's just outside outside's fucking frozen <laughs> just get some ice from outside yeah no they didn't look at this didn't... look at this nicely shaped easily breakable block of ice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe this was there was a this was the plot of Frozen. That's right. The plot of Frozen was to take water from the outside and freeze it. Freeze it, yeah. Yep. The economy of the Frozen Town, I don't remember the name, mm -hmm. was manufacturing ice. Mm -hmm. And when they're like, "Which? What the hell? Why are you? Why are you taking away our economic system, our way of life?" And she's like, "Let it go." Yep. And then they they didn't let it go, and then they had a big song and dance number, and then they let it go. If I remember, she also killed people that she didn't like. So they also didn't have a jail in that town. You know what? That's cold. Cool idea, though. Solves a lot of problems. Yeah, for me, this is the bar with, you know, because he just cracked the ice. Mm -hmm. Look at the prosperity here. I mean, mm. amazing. They've even got one of those button oh, Spray thingies. nozzly guys with different flavors of right. soda in it. And like Super sinks smart. and and you got to clean all this stuff. Look at this beautiful and, glass carafe. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Mm. Where, what's what's a carafe? This thing. Yeah, yeah, like hey, you got it exactly right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I looked for the fanciest glassware in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you get these at IHOP. <laughs> this is this, this I don't know what, what they're called. called. <laughs> yeah, they even have like homemade, not just moonshine, but it's like whiskey. Like this guy's, you know, he's making yeah. it himself. Yep. I mean. And these like banners up here, Corona. 2003, they've somehow kept them in good shape. Pristine. They're manufacturing items for decor. Look at that fan up the top. This one or this one? The hanging fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No dust. No dust. Pristine shape. Probably works. Amazing. I mean, talk shit about communism, but mm -hmm. it looks to be working in this small scale. Hey, if you didn't go to jail, everything's pretty good. That's right. 
the outside jail out of the blue sky. Yep. Mongolian mindset. This fight between these two brothers, I felt it. Dead felt intense. It. Yep. This is, it happened so soon, too. They didn't have, like, a day of, like, we're here and we're just happy to see each other. It's just get right back into the old battles. Whew. Brutal. And you can tell there's some type of tension family battle because Joel doesn't come out right and just tell Tommy that that Ellie is is a, an important person. He says that she's some firefly important person's kid looking for their family. Like, why why didn't he just tell him the truth? Why didn't he tell him, like, this is Ellie is immune, is an important person? Well, I mean, he hasn't seen him for a very long time, so he doesn't trust him with that information right off the bat. Oof. Kind of makes sense. It's, you know? It's a lot I to guess. drop on a person. You, you show up in town... Kind of their life is changing right then and there because you show up, things, dynamics are changing, and then you drop a bomb on them like Ellie's immune. It's a lot for a person to take. Interesting. It's a judgment call. It's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is this outside, clearly daytime. People have mm-hmm. warm cold weather going on and then here this trash can look at this trash can on the left side of the picture there's an open fire what what are they doing what what are they they, why are they heating the outside well if somebody wants to go warm their fingers then they take off their gloves and they do the warm their hands go inside it's a community outside heater go inside (laughs) why are we sending smoke up into the air where somebody might see it because they are not advertising their location. Okay, good point. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it is. It's a waste. It's a waste of garbage. I mean, I don't know what's in there, but I'm assuming it's garbage because you wouldn't want to burn useful things. That's a good point. But if you're burning garbage, you might get toxic stuff in the air. Yeah. Right. Actually, I, w- I wonder what garbage looks like 20 years after stuff is stopped being made. Maybe it's only like organic stuff. Because like, what else can you can't but, get plastics? But but even then, if you're like, you know, putting stuff on wood, like, you know, tree tar or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how true, true. Yeah, you're treating wood. You know, some of that organic material doesn't turn into nice things right. after burning. Carcinogens. I mean, kind of everything. Yeah. So I think. But yeah, why, I agree. Now this is a really bad what idea. Do, what are you doing out there? Why yeah. Why are you putting open can open trash bin fires? Yeah. If you want to get inside of somebody's house. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of which, if the garbage can was a space heater outside, talk about wasteful. Look at this space heater. Yeah. Space heaters are not, they're power hungry things. Um, They have so much energy to work with. They're just space heater. No big deal. Throw it up. Crazy. And then there's all kinds of manufactured goods in here that I just, I'm not sure you're going to get without like national supply chains, like fluorescent lights. Mm -hmm. You know, this requires mercury and complex engineering. That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Right. Maybe these like lamps here. That's. Mm, They could stick around, but maybe your bulbs are going to be the weak spot. Yeah. At at thermos right here. That's probably really difficult to manufacture. Some of other stuff's out of focus, but I mean, a lot of this stuff tools and machines i mean you're going to be able to manufacture some of that if you have a metal worker like wrenches and screwdrivers maybe but like this looks like a electric motor here i just Mm -hmm. i don't think that's going to be made in a small town like this yeah once those brushes go out that electric motor is useless so they need to organize this so that everything is preserved as long as possible but Mm. they have prosperity what am i what am i saying yeah, I mean, it's just it's off of their radar because things are going really great. Mm-hmm. They don't need contingency plans. Yeah. Oof. Oh yeah. So don't advertise. Let's listen. Wait, who said don't advertise? It was Maria. Was it Maria. Maria. Maria okay. says don't advertise. So Joel says like, how do you how are you not getting found out? Like, how do you? Yeah. So this is what they say. How do you keep this place quiet? Being in the middle of nowhere helps. Not advertising what we have. Saying off the radio. So she says, not advertising what we have. Yeah. Meanwhile, in a society that doesn't have power, 
we're going to have <laughs> lights on the outside with open flames. <laughs> it's a society without power, you mean like like the world writ large. The wor- and right. then, but this little community has power and I like right. lights on, open flames at night. It's not like they're on the top of the mountain and nobody can see down from above them. Like they're right next to a mountain. People can easily see down on top of you. Right. And during a snowstorm, all that snow like reflects the light around. Like yeah. this is just just screaming to people, come right. look at me. And all it takes one travel. There's going to be people traveling around, probably, you know. And it doesn't have to be that many. They're going to be wandering. They're like, what? What's over there? There's light. There's sound. It's, yeah. And well, and then they continue on, you know. And then they tell people somewhere else, and then the word spreads. That's weird thing. Yeah. You can. Have, this is. There's no light discipline here. Oh my God. Especially if you consider that anyone on the travel, anyone traveling, will be should be using light discipline they don't want to get caught so they're That's dark right. at sunset so there it's really darkness everywhere except for this thing yeah Just screams like yeah. come look at me so yeah they may not be advertising like we are here but they're advertising by being careless with light have you ever done this where like i spent i live most of my life in either a large city or suburbs and mm-hmm. like you just can't really see much of the sky because there's street lamps on people's mm-hmm. house lights like and it, it blurs out the light mm-hmm. if you've ever gone to somewhere like out in the woods or out in like mm-hmm. farmland or up on a mountain it is dark it yeah. is dark and your eyes adjust it's amazing how yeah. dim things you can see when there's no stray light around that's right like, this place would be seen from very far away yeah if it's a full moon and you're out in the woods it's like i can see so much with the full moon if it's a new moon and I'm nearby this town. I mean, it's going to be dark. And right. then what's that town? What's this one thing making light at night? Like it, it doesn't happen yeah. anywhere in nature. <laughs> <laughs> like at the bottom of the ocean, there's like anglerfish. Like what else makes light like yeah. that? Nothing. Right. Yeah. It would just stand out. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> this is, this is, I couldn't believe that Joel said this. So you're in an apocalyptic situation and Joel is like, you have no idea what loss is. I was like, probably everybody knows what loss is in this situation. <laughs> like, But you've encountered this. I mean, I've encountered this with like, you don't, you don't understand when you're a parent. Like, that's what he's doing. Like, totally right. Like, let's watch the clip. But I mean, she's saying you don't understand what loss is, but pretty much everybody in this situation is going to have lost family that's members, right. friends, that's close right. people. It's like statistically, it's like four fifths of your friend group is all dead. Like, like everyone knows what it's like. To death. <laughs> oh, that's right. right. And Tommy was a was a firefly, so like he definitely knows what it's like to have comrades die. Right. So he says this to Ellie, and Ellie has grown up in nothing but the apocalypse. She hey, doesn't know who her parents are. She doesn't. She doesn't even. Yeah, her parents are not even in the picture. Her brothers oh, and sisters you know not even in the picture. What do you, what do you mean? Don't know what <laughs> loss is. <laughs> you know what? Her entire life has been pandemic. Uh, not pandemic. Her entire life has been has been apocalypse. She doesn't know how good it was before, so therefore she doesn't know what loss is. Joel I speaks mean, the truth. <laughs> I mean, ready? Yeah. You have no idea what loss is. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody, fucking except for you. I mean, she has an immediate like. You have no. She says. He says no idea what loss is, and then she immediately comes. Says, I've lost this person and that person and my parents. And it's, it's like, Joel, <laughs> what are Joel, you doing? <laughs> back down a little bit, bud. <laughs> like, what are you doing? This is a but teenager. he's like, my daughter is more important than your parents. Like, no, we're not comparing. <laughs> we're wait, not wait. comparing. My daughter is more important than everything you've known. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Joel. You're oh, better man, than Joel. That. You have no idea what loss is. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody fucking except for you. Joel lists his like gambling debts. He's like, I used to be a millionaire. You don't know what fucking loss is. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I've never lost a million dollars. I don't know. Point. Yeah. I don't know. I've always had zero. He's like, I used to travel in airplanes. Now I don't anymore. You don't know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Thanks, Joel. I guess I don't know. It's like Disneyland. <laughs> Disneyland, I used to go there, get that dole, that dole whip. It was so good. That banana cream. Mm. You don't know what it's like, Ellie. You don't know. <laughs> Ellie, you don't know. Uh, so this is uh, not advertising again. Yeah, turn off your lights. It's nighttime. Like, whoa. See you. 
Whoa, this is a, this is a, this this could be an oversight right here. Forgot to close the windows. Okay. Why is there an outside light on? That's just Yeah, I mean, most of the time it's going to be giving light to no one there. No one it's there. Just, it's just wasteful. It's just wasteful. And it's it's worse than wasteful. It's telling people who are wandering by uh What's that light? What's that thing there? Actually, so so they should be drawing as little power as they could they can from the dam because mm -hmm. if they draw less power then they could run the dynamo slower which will make them last longer All right so keep yeah yeah absolutely because the faster you run it you could run out of water yeah although even if it's not a running out of if, even if there's plenty of water but you're just spinning the the hydroelectric That's conversion cool. quickly you're wearing out the motors right like save them yeah. as much as you can just yeah. trickle enough energy. I agree. Yeah. Any extra you're not water, getting don't worry about it. Replacement bearings and, and turbines and exactly. whatever else parts. Yeah, they're not coming. Exactly. This scene. This scene was emotional for me, but also infuriating. So so Joel and Ellie are taking a horse and they're gonna to leave to Eastern Colorado University. And Tommy says goodbye. And and it's emotional because like they've been missing their brother for so long, but, but also why didn't Tommy just go with them? Like it's a day's yeah. ride away from Eastern Colorado university. Like go with them. They're here hatching it out and they're like deciding like we're, we're not, we're going to have to split up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and in fact, you see, you see in Joel's eye. Yeah. 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 So, so Tommy's like patting him on the shoulder, connecting mm -hmm. with him and it's heart it's heartbreaking but, yeah. but why didn't why didn't you just go with them well the thing i didn't understand was why not why didn't joel and ellie stay longer i mean i know they need to go find the cure and everything but it's and it the sooner the better but also stay there get sleep replenish your calories mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, build mm -hmm. up your strengths plan the trip maybe try to bring tommy along he can be part of the planning like you have abundance to try to make this happen it seems like they're rushing it. They have right. the resources right now. And nobody was kicking them out. Right. Maybe get Maria involved and be like, hey, this is Joey Chin. Look at her arm. Like, we got some, yeah. we got the real deal here. Yeah. And even though the commune is abundant, the men of the settlement are probably going to need to go out and hunt and take care of stuff on horseback like we saw. So mm -hmm. danger is going to be there anyway. So this could be part of the danger that the commune has to take care of. That's right. And so the, the commune recognizes the danger. They have patrols, as we saw in the beginning of the episode. Why can't they just send a patrol as an as a escort group well, yeah. with, yeah. with uh, Joel and Ellie? Which means Joel and Ellie are going to need to stay behind, build some connections, play a little bit of politics to convince people that this is a thing. This could be a great home base for them. Actually, yeah. They're, so, they're ducking out so quickly. Yeah. Plus, they have enough resources to give them a horse, a whole horse. Yeah. Damn. Whole horse. Round it up. Fully and grown they're like, like, yeah, horse. we're going to take it. We can give it to Ugarate. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, uh, af this is after Joel and Ellie have left, which I thought was too quick. And they're on their way to the university. I wonder where they are. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes immediately <laughs> snapped to there. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're not even like in the trees to just mm -hmm. I, it's visible. Yeah, it's probably unlikely that they'll run into anybody. This is vast wilderness, but at the same time. I mean, that's what that guy said at the beginning of the episode, and then he found mm -hmm. Joel and Ellie in his house. Like you know, people will wander by and yeah. check in on things that looked well maintained or alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is uh let's let's watch some ammo wasting. Yes. Is it easy to make bullets and rounds and gunpowder? It is not. I don't, I don't think it is. It is not. Um even if you want to make like a bullet, like you can melt silver or lead if you can find them. Like, mm -hmm. like how are you even going to get those materials to to make a yeah. to, to cast a bullet? Mm. So I yeah. think what you have to do is non-shooting reps. Yep. 
There's a lot you can learn about the weapon without actually firing. You know, handling, moving around, holster, unholster, I don't know, all the things you could do without actually firing. And you could oh. even take the bullets out and, and do clicks mm -hmm. and learn about Dry breathing pipes. and all that stuff yeah. without actually firing around. I think this was wasteful. I wonder if in the apocalypse, air rifles become super important because it's uh, training weapon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It would be probably a good idea at some point to fire training rounds, but... It's a limited resource. You can't, very limited you know, resource, yeah. I mean, it, I'm, I'm aware you can you can make your own ammo, but like when people do that, they buy assembled parts and then assemble them. Like, how do you yeah. make a primer? Like, first you need to right. make a cap, then you have to get the primer paste and you need to mush it in there and dry it. But like, where did that primer paste come from? Where did the cap come from? Like, right. Well, you're uh, going to need to get to the library to get books about right. it. So you right. have chemists on it. And that means diverting resources in your small town toward weapons manufacturing, which could have gone to something else. That's right. It's tricky. It's cost benefits for everything. Yeah, everything. And making those decisions in a commune, it's not just it's tricky because, you know, there's opportunity costs everywhere. Mm hmm. Very Some people hard. will say, like, we don't need to make more guns. We need to get more laundry facilities up. You know, that type of thing. Right? Yeah. And so you need a strong leader to decide. It's like, mm, we don't need a second laundry. We need more ammo. I'm the dictator. I'm Maria. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, do you disagree with me? Then his body is outside. outside. Your body is outside. I yeah. would like to talk to you. Yeah. He voted Ruthless. by intimidating the outsiders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as you cross me, you're an outsider. Mm. Oh, yes, this is something I mentioned earlier in the video. Okay. Just they showed the map. They were in um, Yellowstone. Um, let me close this up here. They were in Yellowstone. Zooming out here. So they were in Yellowstone, which is in Wyoming, northwest Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, oh, gosh. I can't see the state lines. Here we are. Okay, I gotta go to the map. Uh, uh, there it is. Here's Yellowstone. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's Yellowstone, Northwest Wyoming. 25 is all the way over here. Mm -hmm. So they went back east. That was my interpretation as well. So mm -hmm. they were at Yellowstone and the the uh, Native American couple were like, yeah. don't go west, west don't is super west. dangerous, but that's yeah. because the commune on, lives on the west mm -hmm. and they make it look dangerous. And then when they said, you have to go to Eastern mm -hmm. Colorado University, they had to backtrack across mm -hmm. Colorado. Yeah. So, so somehow the settlement that they're in is somewhere in here. Well, I thought the continue. settlement is somewhere even further west. Because they're right. Because because they were in the they were at the lake. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then the old couple the they were like, don't go west, go east. Yeah. And then and then Joel and Ellie are like, we're gonna go west. We're gonna go west, west. try to find the town. So then the town's somewhere further left. So they came all the way over here. And then when they're like, we gotta go to Eastern Colorado University, they double backed. Yes, 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 yes. And came down here somewhere. somewhere. And they, they ended up they said it was a five day ride all the way down here somewhere. Whoa. Maybe. So wow. Okay. Got a little disoriented there, but yeah. There we go. Okay. But looks this, like they're gonna just, make it. Yeah, this is just a cool shot. Nice university. Just mm -hmm. brings me, you know. It would be it would be cool to explore that post apocalypse, you know, just to see and see what life was like. I don't know. I would have a fun time exploring. Sure. I mean, if I had the food and the water to do it. Um just cool. I thought it was cool. Yeah, you can, like each building would be its own little mystery mm -hmm. museum thing. Yeah, oh yeah. A little time capsule. Yeah. This was the the list that they found. They're like, oh, they're bugging out. Therefore, this is the list of bug out supplies. Is this even a good list? Oh, I didn't look at it. Let's look. Colorado to Salt Lake City transport number CH0918. What is that? Is that a rail car? Oh, so the first one is University of Eastern Colorado to mm -hmm. Salt Lake City. To Salt Lake City. Transport number. Maybe, maybe it took car? Maybe it took several trips and these are the numbers. I don't know. Sign, Sign off, off. Okay. Adams G. Okay. Package so total could... not applicable. Okay. So they're okay. <laughs> Notes. Bioscience Center, University of Eastern Colorado campus. Contents. 
So this is a content of maybe one box because package total means this is for one box, not a set of boxes. Textiles, clothing, blankets, youth, child, adult, medical so IV bags, <laughs> okay. IV bags, acetaminophen, first aid kits. Yeah. Wow, they're manufacturing these things. I don't know how long saline bags last. I guess I guess they're saying that University of Eastern Colorado had also a medical portion. I guess that's possible. Like that's where we possible. did our grad, there was a medical campus. So mm -hmm. okay. Uh, shelf life of these things, not sure. But yeah. ammunition, 45, 357, shells, shotgun cells, sealed gunpowder. So they are maybe manufacturing gunpowder. Oh, okay, at the university. They, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe they have access to, well, they have access to the library. So then they can, they have True. access to labs. True. Maybe they can do it. I don't know. Okay, maybe. Okay. Okay. Food perishables, canned food, corn, tuna, et cetera, water jugs. Yeah. Canned food is probably running dry at this point. Is it 20 years down the road? I think you're jerkying. Yeah, I also don't know why trying. you would have canned food on a college campus. Maybe at like the community donation place, but otherwise. Maybe they brought it with them and this is continuing should, supplies. Should have been like, check the freshman dorms for ramen and cookies. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's still good. My God. <laughs> what is down yeah. here? Whoa, science. That looks like. Check it out. Let's see particles. Oh, interesting. That looks like some kind of nuclear decay. Interesting. I thought that was cool. like a molecule or something. Maybe. One of those Could be a things. molecule. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. That's cool. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the noise. So we had been talking about how much noise uh, Joel and Ellie had been making. And we're like, people are going to be listening. They can hear. You know, we want to make no noise. And then I found some, we found, I found some examples in here where Joel and Ellie are just being quiet. And they hear just movement. It's not even anything necessarily like crazy. It's just kind of rustling. Rustling. Because and, if and there's and nothing talking. around you, what's rustling? Yeah. And they immediately turn to, right? So when when Ellie and Joel are making all that noise in Kansas City, there's a bunch of people who are going to be like, what the? So here's an example. Ready? Something you make before moving. They just left. Maybe not all of them. There's a second one too after this. Better facilities? I don't know. So they, these guys out here, wandering around in the middle of the road, talking probably at a conversational level, and Joel and Ellie through a window on the second floor hear them probably when they're 100 feet away. They snap mm -hmm. to the talking. Yeah. In comparison to absolute silence, a little bit of talking is super loud. And, and these guys are walking through the campus thinking, I'm not hearing anyone. Must be must be empty. All right. Let's talk like normal, whatever. Right. But actually, like you don't know who's in broken windows. That's right. If Joel and Ellie were better equipped and more violent, these four guys are dead from the roof. Or right. dead from the whatever floor they're on. Mm-hmm. And if, if you're loud like that, then they can be tracked easily. That's right. Maybe Joel and Ellie, if they were bad actors, don't kill these people. They follow them back to their base and kill everyone at night. Yeah. So gotta you, be silent. Yeah, gotta be silent. If you're really loud and people are tracking you and you go out of sight, oh, I can still hear them. I know where they are. Yeah. Yeah. So. In fact, you can hear around corners. You can't see around them. Can't see around corners. So this is a this is the chemistry lab that they go to where the monkeys were. Mm -hmm. Look at all the supplies. We've got a case. We've got, yeah, That's a very nice case. Work. Yeah, very nice case, right? That's an impact-proof watertight break case. Yeah. Tubing here. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's easy to manufacture. No way. Wires, cordage. Yeah. This looks like a dolly or, or maybe a stretcher that can yeah, one help of those transport stuff. Shelving. Cases. Yeah. Lots of good stuff in here. Yeah. Looted this up. is just one room of in on one building of the campus. Maybe the commune should make some trips out of here to strategic places and pick up supplies. Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe the commune should relocate to here. That's actually a good point. Yeah. Oh, no, no, but they need the, the power from the dam. The dam. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's like, that makes them stuck there then. Mm -hmm. What an aggressive way to point at something. 
<laughs> like you, you could use your finger. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So I guess they're over here somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in there. And then they're, they're you know, they're going to go to Salt Lake City because that's where the Firefly base relocated to. Mm -hmm. Just a cool map. Yeah, very cool map. This is what a good episode. horse. What's that? Joel, Joel falls off the horse and horse is like, yeah. uh, I'll just wait. I'm waiting until you guys are ready. Wait. Yep. He's a good guy. I was thinking Joel is going to die. Yeah. I mean, falling off stabbed. a horse, you can break your arm or your back. Actually, just it's already enough of a fall. It's also the, well, I mean, also the stabbing. Yeah, when you when Ellie looks at his wound, it's pouring out. It's pouring. Yeah, and that's stabbing into. I forget which side, left side, right side, but there's intestine right there. Right. So if if, if the intestine has been breached, you can go a septic. You're gonna go septic, and I don't know without modern medical facilities to get in there and clean it all out. I think no way. I think you're pretty much done. I thought there's probably like some miracles that happen somehow that the body is able to fight it off, but I think it's like 99.9 percent .9 like you're toast. So is Joel gonna yeah. die here? I don't see a way out. Maybe he eats the horse and gains its spirit power. Uh. Well, they hop on that locomotive and get to the nearest hospital. That fully functioning locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. It does seem to be well taken care of. It does, yeah. There's not even snow on it. Yeah, why is there no snow? On it? I guess it could. I, it, it could, could. I guess it, it, it is. There is possible that it melted. Like melted, there's there's, yeah. there's no snow in my car right now, but there's snow on the grass. Like right. it's possible. So yeah, if we're looking at the snow level on the ground here, maybe maybe quarter inch, half inch here. Yeah, and I guess a similar argument. Like, why is there no snow on the horse? Right, right. horses outside. Right, no, right. horses. Snow. The train is also warm blooded. Yeah, you see those little bits of grass there. I mean, yeah. also shouldn't there be snow on top of the grass, or yep. unless those grass wasn't outside when it snowed. Unrealistic. Unrealistic. Shouldn't there be snow on the camera that we're looking through? Unrealistic. Shouldn't there be snow like on those clouds, like like from clouds above them snowing down? Mm -hmm. Yep. There should be. There should be snow in all of the universe. Totally unrealistic. Shouldn't there be snow falling on the Earth from orbit? Yep. I guess that's a comet. <laughs> Shooting stars. That's nice. So I'm really worried that <laughs> getting back to <laughs> I'm really worried Joel, Joel's going to die. I think he's done. Yeah. I don't see a way out. I he should die. It'd be a miracle. Well, yeah. he's not dead yet. They cut away and, you know, you're like <gasps> in real trouble. I hope he wakes up in the Native American wife, husband, wife in their house. That'd be nice. I like, I mean, actually like, like, I like them a lot. Like, I do too. But they're hundreds yeah. of miles away. No way. Helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and i think yep that's it that was it super fun yeah i like i i like the episode i you know there's some problems but it was fun i you know mm -hmm. really worried about joel now damn all right catch okay. us uh next time for season one episode seven next week see you then see you